Good evening, guys. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hi, yes. guys. Okay, welcome. Uh, my apologies. Okay, la disculpa del caso. Eh, teacher Ivan, pues no va a poder estar con ustedes este día, pero le voy a acompañar yo solo por hoy. Okay. Así que welcome and thank you very much for joining today. Just give me one moment because for some reason. Okay, here we go. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the thing is that I can hear you through the computer, but not through the headset. Um, well, anyways, I think we're going to work like that. And then let's see if you know if you're able to um to fix it. Okay, I'm going to uh share the screen with you. And probably at 8:10, I'm going to pass the attendance, okay? Así que, well, let's begin, okay? Um, well, I hope you're, you know, sound and safe, right? I know that it's been, you know, raining and in some parts of the country, it's been a little bit, you know, cold. And hopefully, you know, this situation will um, finish pretty soon. Well, um, there's a very interesting topic for today, guys, which is related to this. And, and actually, I would like to go back and Hello. introduce you through the, hi, good evening through the objective, okay, that we have. So the objective that we have for today, or at least the main objective is the following. At the end of this section, participants will be able to practice using clauses and phrases showing contrast and exceptions. But I will try to take you, you know, through um, this, I would say, uh, section. But in my case, I will go little by little. OK, I will kind of I'll talk a little bit about what a phrase is and then also what a clause is, and then we will put everything together. So um, this is like the main objective. I think yesterday, teacher, Ivan just gave you the introduction and you were working a little bit with I think it was vocabulary and some questions. OK, for you. My name, by the way, is Marcela Ortiz de Dañan, okay? And um, as I said before, I'll be with you only for today. Uh, let's move on. Now, the very first thing that we have is the, I would say the definition of what a clause and a phrase is. Reina, tell me. Sorry, Ms. do you call a tenus? Oh, no, not do yet. You... In my case, okay. uh, siempre en mi caso, chicos, la paso, bueno, los que han estado conmigo anteriormente, eh, la paso hasta las I10, entre, entre las I10 y las I15. Uh -huh. Creo que Teacher Iván la pasa al principio. Ok. Yeah. Ok. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, let's begin with this and let me open up here my, my uh, whiteboard and then I'm going to allow you some time for you to uh, share your questions with me as well. Let me see. Why am I not able to? Okay, stop. Guys, question number one. Okay, here we have two things. We have a clause and we have a phrase. Okay, now, just in your own words, right? I would like you to tell me, what is a clause, guys? What do you think a clause is? What is a clause? What is a phrase? Anyone? Any idea? No? Don't worry. Actually, I'm here to help you out with that. So guys, um, these are two, two important, you know, words that we need to know um, how, you know, they work. Number one, we have a close. A close is the following. Is a group, sorry, is a group, of words that have a subject, subject, and a verb. Okay, so that is what that that is a close, and then we have a phrase. So, but what is a phrase, right? I'm giving you like the main definition. So, a phrase is a group of words, generally I would say from two and more of words. I would say two probably. Um, going to close here. That do not 
have subject and verb. Okay? So that is a phrase, right? Now, when it comes to clauses, we have to remember two things, okay? And I'm sorry that I'm giving you, you know, these definitions first, but I think it's important to understand what they are. And then we can continue with, um, with what the book has, okay? Now, when we talk about clauses, we can have two types, okay? Two types of clauses. So what are those two types? Well, number one is going to be the dependent, right? Dependent clause. And the second type is the independent clause, right? Okay. As you can see from the names, right? Um, dependent is the one that, I will, I will put it here. This clause, has a no um this one vamos a comenzar con esa this close has meaning by itself o sea ella solita eh, si usted la dice se entiende ya le voy a dar ejemplos eh, this close has meaning by itself okay or it's a complete thought Okay, it's a complete thought. The other one is the opposite. La otra es lo contrario, okay? So, vamos a ponerlo acá. This clause has no meaning by itself. It's an incomplete thought, okay? Incomplete thought. Examples. Going to, I think I'm going to organize them in a different way. So, I would like to have this one here. And this one, I would like to have it here. Because actually the independent one is the important one, okay? Bye. So since we know what a clause is, we know what a, what a phrase is, and we know now that we have two different clauses, okay? <clears throat> Bye. For the independent clause, I can say something like, I um, eat cake, okay? I can say, I eat cake. And just by saying, I eat cake, guys, you will understand the idea, right? Like, oh, great. I like cake too, right? But what if I say something like this? I'm going to come here to the dependent. When is my birthday? So if you, if you, if you find something like, when is my birthday, you will be like, aha, Marce. When is my birthday? How about, is that a question or are you trying to tell me something with when is my birthday, right? So here you can tell, okay, that we have two different ideas. The first one over here, I eat cake has meaning on its own, right? If you, if, if, if I say, hey, hi, I eat cake and you will say, great, good for you. I like cake too, I eat cake too, right? But if I say, when is my birthday? You will see like, yeah, when is my birthday? I don't understand. Are you asking me a question? When is your birthday? Or you are telling me that you do something when is your birthday, right? So if I put the two sentences together, I'm going to go down here and I will say, I eat, I eat cake when it's my birthday. My birthday. Perdón, ahí arriba les le, le hizo falta eso. Birth, birthday. Okay. Aquí hizo falta eso. It's. So, I eat, my, I eat cake when it's my birthday. Because in my case, guys, I do not eat cake often. Right? I try to avoid sugar. I try to not to eat, uh, you know, things that are very sugary. So, when I eat, eat cake, it's when you know, it's my birthday, right? So as you can see here, we have two different clauses, okay? Now, what happens here is this. Eat, eat a cake or eat cake or I eat cake is my independent clause. Es la independiente. Why? Because it has a complete thought. O sea, una idea completa. And when I say when it's, it's, my, when it's my birthday, it's the 
dependent clause. Why? Because this is an incomplete thought. Es una idea incompleta. And it has no meaning by itself. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que necesita algo más para tener sentido. Otherwise, it won't make sense. Okay? Now, a phrase. A phrase could be something like, um, let me let me think. Um, ah, I can say pasta with tomato sauce. Okay, this is a phrase. Marce, but there's no subject. There's no there's no verb there. Pasta with tomato sauce or just with tomato sauce. That is a phrase. Eso es una frase. But we will go ahead and, you know, get into this and to a little bit, you know, more details once we get to the topic. So in the meantime, I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to pass the attendance, okay? Uh, Alba Maricela Interiano de Godines. Alba Maricela Interiano. Not here. Um, Alexandra Elena Barrera Lopez. Alexandra Elena Barrera Lopez. Eh, Alexandra Melissa Garcia Gutierrez. <clears throat> Alexis Josué García. Hello, teacher. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Y esa es Cecilia Guardado. ¿Ah? Ese es el listado, teacher. Fíjese que se me aparece. No es ese, vea. Yo decía no, porque... que raro, nadie me contesta. Sí, porque el primero que mencionan. <laughs> no, es, don't worry, um... don't worry. I'll look for yeah. it. Tiene razón. Teacher, I thought I was in the wrong group. Oh, no, dijo usted. No, ya los encontré. Okay, here you are. Because I didn't, yeah, I didn't too. see. <laughs> I didn't see teacher Ivan's name there, but now it is. What about now? Abdi Abisua Peña López. No? Okay, uh, Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Porque hoy sí estoy aquí en el de Teacher Iván, okay? Ana present Filopena. Teacher. ¿Qué present dijo present? Teacher. Ahí está, thank you, Alejandro. Eh, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. Thank you. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Gracias, teacher. Gracias. Permítame, chicos, que yo creo que no le estoy guardando la lista, pero. Wait. Ay, no, espero no hacer un desastre aquí al teacher, espérame. Aquí está. Wait. Um, no me deja ingresarles. Permítame, chicos. Qué pena con ustedes. I'm sorry. Me lo voy a decir que no puedo. Me voy a decir a él que no puedo primero. Porque aquí sí me deja escribir. Pero aquí no. Maybe the document is. I think it's locked. Creo que está locked. Uh -huh. um, if you take a picture. No, ahí está. Dice que también le pasó lo mismo ayer. Vaya, entonces hagamos una cosa. Eh, I'm going to take notes here. Voy a tomar nota acá. Deme un momento. Y este y ya luego el que, 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 que vea el video y ahí tome la, la asistencia. Vaya, voy a comenzar. Vamos del 1 al 27. Vaya, me dijo eh, Alejandro José Quintanilla está acá, ¿verdad? 
Um, yes, teacher. Perfect. I'm here. Fine. Perfect. Give me a moment. Voy a irme aquí. So, Thank you. you? Eh, a Ana Filomena también me dijo que está acá. ¿Verdad? Dos. ¿Verdad? Tres. Eh, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy también. ¿Verdad? Ana Yanira es número cuatro. Eh, Andrea Michelle García Selva también me dijo que está acá, ¿verdad? Que es número cinco. Yes, teacher. Vaya, Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher, I'm here. Thank you, Thank you Byron. Hey, hi, Byron. Me acuerdo de... Hi, Byron. teacher. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Vamos a ver. Hello. Tengo a Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. Thank you, número siete. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. No está Cecilia. Vale, entonces ocho, no. No, y tampoco la uno. Present. Who say present? Cecilia. Ah, Ceci, you, you, you wrote to me, right? Usted me escribió. Sorry. Um, sí, ahí está Cecilia Elizabeth. Gracias, Cecilia. Perdón, disculpe, se me fue. Bye. Eh, continúo con... César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander. No está. Um, Claudia Janet Iraeta Martínez. Present teacher. Gracias. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Daisy. Thank you. Number 12. Dice César Alexander es número 9. Bye. Um, Gabriela Lauri Sequeira Bernal. Present. Gracias. Thank you, Gaby. Uh, yeah. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Thank you so much. Gladys Imelda Sánchez Castro. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Thank you. Thank you. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Thank you. Carla Stephanie Perlo Mansor. Hi, teacher, present. Thank you so much. Eh, Luis Fernando Enriquez Herrera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening, thank you, Diana. Ah, no, sí, Madeline Diana. Huh? Eh, 21, Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Good evening, present, Good evening. teacher. Thank you. Eh, Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Good evening, present. Good evening, thank you. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. I'm here, teacher, present. Thank you so much. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Reina hello, Isabel. Hello. I'm here. Hi, thank you, Reina. Good evening. Eh, Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present, teacher. Hello, thank you. Eh, Rufino Amirka Hernández Linares. Presente. Ahí lo vi, uh -huh. thank you. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Bye, chicos, todos están. Very good. Bye, perfect. Okay, so now let me go back here to what I was saying. And just before I do that, I'm going to share with you the information that I was sharing before. There you go, okay. Excellent. Um, well, the information guys, don't worry. Uh, Teacher Ivan is going to share with you uh, the information later or let me see if, if, it, if it allows me to, um, to access to WhatsApp web. Y ahí que él se los, esté, se los esté compartiendo a través del grupo. Ah, okay. Perfect. I'm going to. 
I'm going to add through here. I mean, access through here. Just let me get here this thing. Bye. So, so let's begin with the information here. We have clauses and phrases showing contracts, contrasts and exceptions, right? Now, we know the meaning of clauses and phrases, right? And it says use wild, unlike, and in contrast to, in order to present contrasted information, especially in writing, right? So here we have three examples, okay? Right now we are using three different, you know, words to present contrast, right? It says while the typical Italian person thinks school is boring, the typical Japanese person doesn't. Unlike the Japanese, Italians seem to drink a lot of bottled water. In contrast to Italian drivers, Japanese people drive on the left. Now, guys, um, let me share with you that uh, actually, right, you can go ahead and use it in different, different positions, but my recommendation right now is to go ahead and stick to the positions that we have in the sentences that you have in the examples. Uh, let me share with you this. Bueno, let me share it with teacher Ivan and he will share it with you through through, through WhatsApp. Okay, so and Marcin, how do I know, okay, um, the meaning of these words? Well, para los que me conocen, you know that I used a lot lingui. So if you have lingui, right, um, como les conté de que pueden bajar la, la, la aplicación, but if you have lingui, you can go ahead and look for them. For example, let's go to lingui and let's look for wild, okay, wild. Okay, so while has different, you know, um, definitions and it depends on the context, right? So I have to use dictionary, por eso es que yo siempre les recomiendo lingui o un diccionario porque es la mejor manera, verdad, para poder entender bien una palabra. So I'm, I'm sharing with you, you know, the, the links. So it's while you can use it as mientras, mientras que, right, si bien, aunque, Cuando, a pesar de que, etc. Right? So here down below you can find examples in context, right? Look at this. Estas están perfectas. Um, while it is important to have minimum and maximum positions, it is not effective to put them out in the table initially. Right? That's an example. What I'm doing is just making contrast. But Marcel, when do we make contrast? Right, I mean, uh, why do we have to 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 make contrast between one idea and the other one? Okay. Okay. So actually, when we make contrast, okay, uh, pretty much what we do is trying to separate two ideas, right? Because contrast contrasting the two of them, and to do that, okay, I need certain words. And those words that we need, okay, at least some of them, because we have a, a list, right? We can use this, wild, unlike, and in contrast. Wild will be mientras que. Esa sería la, 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 la um, probablemente la tra traducción que yo le daría. While the typical Italian person thinks school is boring, the typical Japanese person doesn't. Mientras que, ¿verdad? Y luego contrasto con la otra idea. Okay, unlike. Okay, now what happens with the with the word unlike? Oh, unlike has lots of different meanings. Okay, vamos a buscar unlike. Okay, oh, lingui. Okay, for oh, lo busqué en la que no era. Perdón. No, 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 no. This is Dutch. Um, bueno, si tienen la aplicación, sale mejor en la aplicación en el teléfono, ¿verdad? 
by unlike, okay? So unlike has lots of different meanings. And I'll share again this one with you. Ahí está. We have a diferencia de, al contrario de, al contrario que, en contraposición con, en contraste con, etc. Eh, dígame, eh, Ana. Hi, Ana, dígame. Hi, teacher. Uh, maybe the others, uh, Barney, they know, but I need to know how can I identify when I can use all the information with the sentence, but because I, in the meter, in the first meter, I have problems. In the midterm exam, you say? Yeah, in the platform. Okay, very good. Um, you know, that's so, a very good... Uh -huh. so, because in the plasma, in the, in the platform only give uh, a little bit example, but <laughs> it's very different different that the, that the sentence that they give us mm -hmm. in the exam. Okay. So I don't know if... I have a problem with my brain. <laughs> okay, no, no, Anna. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Excellent. No, don't worry. Thank you very much for your question. Actually, that's why we are here. Uh, that's the core, you know, of, of this program. It's to help you with, you know, the questions that you have in the platform. And, well, don't worry. I mean, um, if it's something from the midterm, we can go ahead and take a look at it. And it is true. Sometimes, as you were saying before, eh, Anna, um, we're giving some examples, but then, you know, in the exam, uh, it seems that all the examples that are more elaborated are used and then, you know, it, it, it creates confusion, right? So don't yes. worry, uh -huh. I'll try to, uh, la, voy a dejar cargando porque como ustedes saben, se tarda un poquito la, 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 um... No, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and, uh, my question is that if we have uh, some instruction that we follow, or don't have that kind of problem for not having for not having uh, that yeah. kind of problem uh, but first uh, Anna, i would like to open it up because i i haven't seen you know the the platform eh, bueno de hecho los chicos que estuvieron conmigo que se acuerdan de mí fueron mi último grupo porque no estoy pues dando clase hasta ahora entonces no he visto la plataforma entonces let me go ahead and see it so I can have I can have an idea okay on 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 the context of your question right so are, let me see if I'm if I'm understanding Ana no, what you want worry, to know <laughs> Don't worry. No, no, it's okay. What you want to know is if there is like a formula, okay, for mm -hmm. you to follow. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Mm, you know, here, eh, Anna, more than a formula, I think what they are trying to do is to teach you the words. So, um, as I was saying before, here, if, if, if I can tell you a formula, there's no formula. But that's the reason why I was teaching you guys at the very beginning the following. We have two sentences here, okay? Bye. Y es más, hagamos una cosa. Bye. Let's take a look at the sentences. Ya sabemos que es wild, ya sabemos que es unlike. In contrast to, por, creo que es un poco eh, 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 claro, en contraste con, ¿verdad? Now, if you see the sentence, while the typical Italian person thinks school is boring, Esa es la primera oración, chicos. The second sentence is, the typical Japanese person doesn't. Okay? Now here, I don't have, I cannot have a formula. No puedo tener una fórmula. Más que decir cuál es la dependiente y cuál es la independiente. Ajá. Entonces, if I am able to identify, okay, where is the dependent and independent, mm, I know. Yo sé que siempre siempre la palabra o la frase de contraste va a ir en la, hora, en la, en la, en la cláusula dependiente, right? Entonces, while the typical person thinks school is boring, the typical Japanese person doesn't think it's boring, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí lo corta porque hago una reduction, hago una reducción, porque ya dije anterior que esta gente piensa que la escuela es, es aburrida, pero esta no. Incluso en español lo usamos, usamos esa reducción. ¿verdad? Luego, unlike the Japanese, Italians seem to drink a lot of bottled water. 
lo mismo. Tengo dos cláusulas. Unlike the Japanese es la, es la dependiente porque no tiene significado por sí sola. Unlike the Japanese. Unlike the Japanese what, ¿verdad? Y luego tengo Italians seem to drink a lot of bottled water. Entonces, si yo le podría dar una clave, Ana, sería esa. La, la palabra de contraste siempre la va a llevar la, la cláusula de independiente queriendo decir esto, que es la cláusula que no, que no tiene sentido por sí sola y que no es una, una idea completa. Y la otra es lo contrario, es la independiente, la que tiene este, el, la idea completa o que puede mantenerse por sí misma y solo con decirla tiene sentido. Vaya, and you said that is in the midterm. Me dijo que está en el midterm, ¿verdad? Yeah. Vaya. I try a lot of bad. Veamos. Section one. Sería ese después de la dos o de la tres. La tres, ¿verdad? Let me see. Vaya. Eh, do you remember the, the, the letter? Is it A, B, C, or D? Yes, teacher. In this moment, I give you. Okay. Is the, the letter B combined in regular sentence mm. in the number two? Okay, very good. Excellent. You know what? I'll explain it, and then why don't we work on that one? ¿Por qué no hacemos ese? Okay. Yeah. Uh, ajá, vamos a hacer ese. Um, uh, Ya lo tengo listo. Vale, solo déjenme y lo voy a... Lo voy a duplicar. Vale, ahí está cargando. Ok, entonces, les decía, voy a regresar y luego regreso y luego me regreso a la parte de la plataforma y vamos yeah, a... Yeah, ver... yeah, yeah, yeah. Vale, perfect. Continue, continue. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Now we have the following idea, okay? We have the second one, which is accept, right? Now, this word, okay, can be used with different words, right? That's why it says clauses and phrases showing contrast. Now, accept that is a phrase. Acuérdese que una frase es eso, es más de una palabra que no tiene ni verbo, que no tiene subject, que no tiene una idea completa, por decirlo así, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos tres frases. ¿Cuáles son? Except that, or except, except for, or except, except, I'm sorry, for the fact that, ¿ok? So it says both like to be, except the typical Japanese person watches more of it, right? Or except that the typical Japanese person watches more of it. Okay, now here, eh, pretty much what we're doing is again using this phrase, but not to show contrast, but to show exception. Okay, las excepciones, excepto que, ¿verdad? Eh, then I have, ay, permítame, then I have the second one. Italian and Japanese people are fairly different, except for the age they get married, excepto por. ¿verdad? And the third phrase is Japanese people typically consume less except for the fact that they drink more tea. Excepto por el hecho que. Right? I mean, we use these different phrases in Spanish as well, right? Same thing we have in English, okay? Now, we, ha we again are talking about two ideas, okay? Esto sucede excepto que. ¿Verdad? Esto sucede excepto por. Esto sucede excepto por el hecho que. So those are the three different phrases that we can use to show exceptions. Okay? Now, let's go and create some examples. Which one, Rosa Esmeralda, perdón? En el, en el traductor que usted acaba de sugerir, Salen dos tipos de pronunciación. ¿Cuál tomar? It's about the accent. I think she's talking about the American accent and the British one. Ay, ah, no, pero no es, no es traductor. <laughs> no me lo llamen así a lingüe. Ok. No, please, it's a dictionary. <laughs> Ajá. 
Este, no, sí tiene, tradu tiene translator también, pero el que estoy usando ahorita es el diccionario, pero sí, ¿verdad? It has two different pronunciations. Muchísimas gracias ahí a quien nos ayudó. And we have two. We have the American English version and then we have the British English version, right? So it depends on the, on the, on the one that you... Uh -huh. En cualquiera de las dos puede utilizar. ¿Qué se refería, perdón? Rosa. It was Rosa. Rosa. Ah, uh, o sea, que si, digamos de que uno busca una palabra que quisiera saber la pronunciación, ¿cuál pronunciación tomar? Si la de, de la, la de arriba o la de abajo. It depends. Depende de usted. En el caso de nosotros en El Salvador, generalmente en todos los lugares lo que se enseña es North American English. Es más, cuando usted ocupa un diccionario le van a aparecer dos cosas. Le va a aparecer así. Le va a aparecer eh, NAE, que significa North American English, que sería esta, la de la bandera de Estados Unidos, ¿verdad? Y la otra le va a aparecer como esto, que es British English. Si usted, ¿verdad? Estuviese estudiando eh, British English, ¿Verdad? Ahí sí, ¿verdad? Si usted quiere más irse por, por ese lado, ocupa eh, ese, ese tipo de pronunciación. Pero no, mi recomendación siempre, y pues y porque aquí así se enseña, todos los libros están basados en NAE, North American English. Así que le tendría que utilizar la de la bandera de los Estados Unidos. Ok, thanks. You're welcome. Eh, ok, so let's go ahead and take a look at the examples. It says here, Uh, here's some information about customs, okay? How are they different in order places? Write sentences showing contrasts and indicating exceptions. Después de esto, nos vamos para, el, para la parte del, de la combinación de ejercicios del, del midterm exam, okay? Tenemos acá, when people in the U.S. go to a party, they usually arrive a few minutes late, okay? Now, eh, in El Salvador, Probably it's different, but let's go ahead and and um and see you know the sentence that we can get from it. It says, unlike people in the U.S., most people where I live, okay, well, I mean where I live, arrive on time for parties. Now, guys, what about El Salvador? <laughs> okay, mi risita lo dice toda. What about El Salvador? Diríamos, por ejemplo, unlike people in the U.S., most people where I live arrive late for parties, right? Okay, so that will be in El Salvador. Okay, now here I'm showing contrast because I am saying that in the US they arrive a few minutes late, but here in El Salvador we arrive late, right? Entonces diríamos algo como, unlike people in the US, ay no, perdón, este teclado no me... U.S. go to a party, right? They usually, no, perdón. Unlike people in the U.S., no, perdón. Unlike people in the U.S., here in El Salvador, ¿verdad? Most, most people where I live arrive late for parties. Casi que al, al pastel llega uno, vea. Ok, a la partida del pastel. Unlike people in the U.S., most people where I live arrive late for parties. Now, here we have two clauses. Hay dos cláusulas. Tenemos unlike people in the U.S. Y tengo la otra cláusula. Most people where I live arrive late for parties. ¿verdad? Now, what about the second sentence, guys? It says most people in Canada have cereal and milk for breakfast, okay? Most people in Canada have cereal and milk for breakfast. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens in El Salvador. Voy a dar el ejemplo. Unlike most people in Canada, most, no, pero most, no. Otra vez most. Me voy a quitar most. Unlike, people, unlike most people in Canada, people in El Salvador eat eggs and big beans for breakfast. Okay? This is another example. ¿Verdad? ¿Qué dijimos que eran like? ¿Quién se acuerda? 
a diferencia de. Correcto, muy bien, a diferencia de, a contrario de, en contraste con. Porque eso nos va a ayudar a dar, encontrarle sentido a la oración. And one thing, guys, una cosa que siempre les recomiendo, ¿verdad? <ríe> Creo que lo hice anteriormente, es esto. Eh, yo sé que al principio cuesta y, y buscamos una traducción, pero recordemos que la, que la traducción no es lo mismo que la interpretación, ¿verdad? O sea, una traducción es algo literal, pero la interpretación es todavía más difícil, por eso es que los intérpretes ganan un montón de dinero por hora. No es lo mismo traducir palabra por palabra que interpretarlo, es decir, encontrarle en contexto, encontrar las palabras indicadas para poder expresar la idea que la otra persona quiere decir, ¿verdad? Dígame, Rufino. In the sentences too, uh, uh, I, I can use uh, while. Yeah, while. Or not. Yes, you can. While most people in Canada, mm -hmm. people in El Salvador eat eggs and beets for breakfast. Mm -hmm. While okay. is, uh -huh, it, it, it's something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're showing contrast. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about the second one? Okay, most people in Korea who study a foreign language choose English. Bueno, aquí chicos casi que es igual. Bueno, prueba de ello somos todos nosotros, ¿verdad? Y vamos a decir, porque there's no difference, ¿verdad? Most people who would study a foreign language in El Salvador choose English. Entonces, si queremos usar una oración similar, vamos a decir... Eh, bueno, no, no puedo, no puedo compararlo a menos que fuera diferente. Digamos que si nosotros aprendiésemos um, French, francés, ahí sí habría contraste, pero aquí no hay contraste porque somos iguales en ese sentido, ¿verdad? Voy a hacer un ejemplo, pero obvio, ese ejemplo no es verdad, ¿ok? Es de mentiritas, como diríamos. Bueno, entonces podríamos decir algo así como unlike eh, people, most people, but unlike most people in Korea, right? Eh, comma, people in El Salvador eh, study French. Ahí sí, habría contraste, pero con la, con, pero la verdad no hay porque actually most people who study a foreign language in El Salvador choose English. But let's pretend, okay, that it is not English. It's, it is French, okay? So unlike most people in Korea, right, people in El Salvador eh, study French and they study English. That would be a contrast, okay? Recuerden que eso es el contraste. Dos ideas que son lo contrario, ¿verdad? Eh, luego tengo la siguiente. Dígame, Rufin. Hey, that's la... Siempre la, la three, the sentence in three, uh, I can uh, accept, uh, I, I, I do, I, I make, I make with accept. In the sentence in three, I don't know if it's, it's correct. It's, it's, it's uh, as if where most people, most people in Korea who study a foreign languages choose English, except they don't don't speak friendly, friendly. Mm -hmm. Podría. No, Rufino. In that case, um, except, those are different except... ideas. Son dos ideas diferentes. Eh, vaya, okay. la idea principal is to make contrast, verdad? When we make when we make contrast, we are separating two ideas. Estamos comparando, contrastando dos cosas. Pero cuando estoy usando except es diferente. Eh, for example, ah, okay. ajá, ajá. So, son dos temitas diferentes, ¿verdad? I can say something like, um, people in El Salvador, okay, and let me go back here, okay? Vamos a irnos para acá, voy a usar. Eh, people in El Salvador um, who choose to study a foreign language, porque no todos escogemos eh, aprender una lengua extranjera, pero people in El Salvador who choose to study a foreign language choose English, except for students at private schools. Excepto por los estudiantes de las escuelas privadas. ¿Por qué? Porque ellos ya reciben inglés, entonces ellos buscan otro. 
idioma que aprender porque ya están aprendiendo inglés. Entonces, ahí sí estoy poniendo una excepción. Repito el ejemplo. Uh -huh. eh, in El Salvador, people who choose or students who choose uh, to study a foreign language, they study English. Except for students from bilingual schools, porque creo que sí, bilingual schools, ahí sí, porque reciben inglés y español. Ellos van a escoger otro idioma, ¿verdad? Entonces, ellos van a escoger French, Dutch, ¿verdad? Eh, Italian, Portuguese, I don't know. Ahí sí, pero esa es una excepción. Eso sí es poner una excepción. Pero lo otro es contraste. Uh -huh. No sé si contesto su pregunta. En este caso, only constant uh, use. Ahorita the contraste. Uh, correcto. Okay. Correcto. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Y luego tengo aquí, for people in Italy, lunch is the main meal of the day. Well, eh, and this depends because uh, although it is generally true for Salvadorans as well, right? Uh, we may have our differences. Hay gente que no, que puede decir, no, eh, Marce, eh, the main meal for my day is breakfast, right? Or, but, but in other countries, especially in Europe, okay, eh, lunch is like the main meal of the day, right? And the schedules are completely different, okay? Um, they have different times for, for lunch. They have different time for, for dinner. There are some places in Europe where they have dinner at... I mean, at nine in the evening, eight in the evening, right, etc. Then we have women in Spain usually shake hands when they meet. And in El Salvador, it depends. Because some women in El Salvador do this, others kiss each other in the cheek, right? So, ahí depende, okay? Pero me gustaría aprovechar estos minutos que me quedan, ¿verdad? Porque todavía tengo 15. Y me gustaría ir directo al ejercicio que mencionaba Ana. Y luego pues ya van a seguir eh, con más información sobre este con Teacher Iván mañana. So I'm going to share with you the, the platform. Okay, this is the... Uh, the, the um, exercise that Anna was talking about. And this is in the midterm exam. And don't worry, guys, I mean, bueno, en mi caso, yo trabajo así, creo que teacher Iván trabaja de una forma diferente, pero en mi caso, pues, yo contesto preguntas de, de cualquier sección, ¿verdad? No hay problema. Entonces, tenemos acá instructions. Combine the sentences using the words in parentheses. Remember to use capital letters and periods, okay? Uh, here we have the first one. Y pues entiendo la, ahí la, la confusión, ¿verdad? Porque la verdad es que sí. Este, están un poco, un poco largas las, las instrucciones. Bye. Nos vamos acá. Dice, people in France study British English. Bye. Fíjense en esto, chicos. Fíjense en esto. You are given two sentences. ¿Ok? You are given two sentences. Y al final les dice que van a usar unlike. Entonces aquí viene, ¿verdad? La oportunidad de poner en práctica lo que es una dependent clause y una independent clause. Entonces ahí me voy a quedar, hmm, ¿cuál es la dependiente? ¿Cuál es dependiente? ¿Cómo la voy a complementar? Entonces, one thing that you have to remember, guys, is the position. ¿Se acuerdan que les dije al principio? Les dije, sí la pueden encontrar, les dije yo, en otras posiciones estas palabras. Pero, por el momento, cuando usted haga los ejercicios, usted ponga la palabra al principio. ¿Ok? Entonces, así, tal cual en los ejemplos. If you see in the examples... Ah, les voy a compartir esto, permítanme. Y les voy a compartir. Cuando terminamos el ejercicio, también se los voy a compartir. No sé si ya les empezó a compartir Teacher Iván esas pesas, pero si no hay después se las que se las comparto. Bye. Entonces, vamos acá. How do we start, guys? ¿Cómo vamos a comenzar entonces? La voy a ir haciendo acá. Voy a borrar porque todos vinieron, así que no me hizo falta nada. Vaya, ¿cómo comenzamos, chicos?
¿Cuál sería la primera palabra? Unlike. Unlike. Muy bien. Okay. Unlike. Vale. Ya tenemos lo primero. Now we have the two sentences. Tengo people in France study, study, I'm sorry, study British English. Right? Porque eso es cierto, chicos. Allá en, en Europa se enseña solamente British English. Y aquí en el área pues, del continente americano solamente se enseña, o la mayoría de escuelas eh, o academias o instituciones enseñan North American English. ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos acá, Japanese people generally study American English. ¿Ok? Vamos a respetar el orden de las dos oraciones. Ok, now I have the first word, unlike. Bye. Unlike people in France. Bye. Coma. Ya les ayudé con la primera parte. Unlike people in France. ¿Cuál es la siguiente idea? People in El Salvador study American English. People in El Salvador o la que está ahí, porque aquí está la Japanese segunda people. parte. Ah, muy bien. Entonces, coma. Japanese. Japanese people generally study American Correct. English. Correct. Exactly. Generally study American. Oops, American English. Muy bien. Ok. Ahí tenemos nuestra primera oración. Unlike people in France, comma, Japanese people generally study American English. ¿Ok? Vámonos para la segunda. Vamos a copiar. Ah, dijo que decía que no, ¿verdad? Que no pusiéramos punto. Dice, ah, no, como no. Remember to use capital letters and periods. Vaya, acordémonos que cuando iniciamos una oración, iniciamos con mayúscula y la terminamos con un punto. Y solamente hacemos la excepción cuando aquí lo dice. Pero hoy sí dice, remember to use capital letters and periods. Bye. Number two. Tenemos, some people love online shopping. Period. Some people have never shopped online. While. Vamos a usar while. ¿Cómo, no, cómo, cómo, cómo vamos a comenzar? While. 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 Muy bien. Mm. Mm -hmm. While some people love online shopping. Love, right? Why some people love online shopping. Oops, shopping. Mm -hmm. Comma. Comma. <laughs> Better not. Um, other people. For mm -hmm. some people, okay. Some uh -huh. people, that, that's the word. Have, Have never, never shopped online. Muy bien, mm -hmm. buena pronunciación ahí, shopped online. Muy bien. While some people love online shopping, some people have never shopped online. O sea, estoy haciendo mm -hmm. el contraste. Mientras que a esta gente le encanta, ¿verdad? Comprar en línea, hay gente que nunca lo ha hecho. Ok, mm -hmm. pero les voy a decir algo. En la plataforma hay un error. Y ese error es que aquí está la forma correcta. Yo utilizo la coma y luego son. Pero en la plataforma no está así. Y se los voy a pasar tal cual ahí está para que no cometan, eh, digamos, para que no se los tome como error. Porque no, es, no está correcto. Aquí en la plataforma la pide así. Dice, while some people love online shopping. Punto, y empieza otra oración, some people have never shopped online. Pero quiero aclarar que esto es un error, es coma, así. Esto es lo correcto. Teacher, ¿Mm? I tried that several times. Eso fue también. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. The pero only sí. that I, I couldn't change is the, is the point for the coma. Ay, que lo siento. Ya, yeah, pero no, es, esto, es, esto es algo que, por eso es que siempre se ven con nosotros, porque a veces pues la, la plataforma se le registraron las oraciones de una, de una forma y pues ya no, se, no lo podemos cambiar nosotros como maestros, pero solo les aclaro eso, les voy a pasar yo las respuestas, pero ustedes, ustedes saben que lo correcto es coma y pues continuamos con la cláusula, no es exactamente separar las cláusulas. 
vaya. Tengo la número 3 porque creo que me va a alcanzar el tiempo solo la, para la primera parte. Y pues mañana que siga Teacher Iván con la segunda. Eh, vamos a ver acá. La siguiente dice... Eh, teenagers like chatting online. My brother prefers books to the internet. So we're going to use unlike. ¿Ok? ¿Cómo nos quedaría la oración? Unlike teenagers. Ok, unlike teenagers. Ajá. Uh -huh. Coma. Uh, no, uh, I couldn't see it, teacher. The... It's my... Perdón. Could you, could you show the... Oh, um, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ahí está, perdón, ahí está. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If, uh, on like teenagers. Like sharing online, coma. Me perdí. No. Repítalo. Yeah. <laughs> on, on like teenagers, <laughs> like sharing online, online. Or no, just online. Eh, no, because acuérdense que aquí estamos, y es algo chicos que, que, que probablemente a veces los libros asumen que uno sabe, ¿verdad? Pero aquí estamos haciendo como una reduction, ¿verdad? Estamos reduciendo cosas. Oh, okay. Ajá, entonces no, para no repetir lo mismo en una y en la otra, decimos, unlike teenagers. My brother. Muy bien. Prefer books to the internet. Prefers. Prefers. Books to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Muy bien. By unlike teenagers, my brother prefers books to the internet. Uh -huh. Muy bien. La plataforma ofrece dos opciones. La otra opción que les ofrece es esta. Permítame. Es esta. Teenagers chatting, like chatting online, comma, online my brother who prefers books to the internet. Pero esta no se las comparto porque entonces ya estamos hablando de otra cosa. Es otro tema y no los quiero confundir. Así que nos vamos a quedar con esta, ¿ok? Unlike teenagers, my brother prefers books to the internet. Muy bien. Y ahora nos vamos a la siguiente, que es number four. Sue's parents are traditional. They want her to have a career, except for the fact that, ¿ok? Entonces, vamos a usar ahora una excepción. What do you think would be the... Um, acordémonos que acá es diferente, ¿verdad? Aquí va, vamos con las dos cláusulas. Generalmente, el except for va en medio introduciendo la excepción, ¿de acuerdo? Vaya, ¿cómo nos quedaría? Sus parents are traditional. Except mm -hmm. for the fact that. Muy bien. Yes. Sus parents are traditional. Coma. Except yes. for the fact that they want her uh -huh. to have a career. That they want her to have a career. A career. Muy bien. Okay. Acordémonos, okay. chicos, que he escuchado siempre a varios. Pero career es una carrera universitaria. Perdón, este, una carrera universitaria es una carrera dentro de la empresa. Y major es una carrera universitaria. Major. Major es una licenciatura. Es, son estudios universitarios. Y career es como una, lo que nosotros llamamos en, en, en español carrera. Pero dice, no es que quiero hacer carrera dentro de la empresa. O sea, quiere crecer, quiere formarse. ¿Verdad? Quiere como profesional quiere crecer. Entonces, sus major parents... Es como una, un título. Major. Uh -huh. eh, no, porque ya el, el título sería degree. Por ejemplo, usted sí, quiere sí. decir, ah, yo oh, tengo, yo yeah. tengo este, un título en marketing, por ejemplo. Oh, I have a degree in marketing. Ah, oh, I have a degree in teaching. I have, I have a degree in, in what? ¿Qué más, chicos? In, in art, I have a degree in literature, I have a degree in history, ¿verdad? Entonces, ya eso es un, un título en. Uh -huh. eh, y título, la palabra título no, ten, no tenemos en inglés, pero tenemos diploma, ¿verdad? Oh, I have a diploma, my diploma, right? Ese es su diploma. Eh, 
Sus parents are traditional, comma, exact for the fact that they want to have a career. Bye. Ahora lo que voy a hacer es que les voy a compartir las, las respuestas tal cual están en la plataforma, porque ya las hicieron conmigo, así que no les va a hacer daño que se las comparta. Quiero ver. Aquí está. Porque aquí lo han dejado así, ve. Hay un espacio que no le pusieron ellos. Esta es la número tres. Quiero ver. Otro. De repente, si, me, si les pasa que no, Marce, no me agarró la, la, la respuesta, revisen que no haya, que no hayan espacios, ¿verdad? Etcétera. Y la primera que es esta. Entonces se la voy a compartir a través de acá en el chat. En ambos se lo voy a compartir por acá y acá en el chat de Zoom. Le voy a decir que, les, que él continúe con la segunda parte mañana para que vean, para que vean la parte A y la parte B. Permítanme. Ahora se lo voy a poner acá para que veamos que sí la valida, ¿verdad? Que la va a validar así como yo se las he compartido. Permítanme. Le quiero enviar. Estas como no las hemos hecho, pues nos las marca así. Pero look, the ones in the first part, they are correct. However, however, right, I have already shared with you, okay, what the mistake is with, I think it's number two, okay, that there's a period where there should be a comma, okay, just for you to know. Uh, well, guys, uh, I was able to see that all of you attended the class. Thank you very much, okay, because of your effort. I know that it's late. I know that probably some of you are hungry. I, I know that probably of you <laughs> would prefer to, or would rather, you know, watch series on TV, but you are here. So good oh. job on that, definitely. And I wish you the best. It was nice seeing you, well, seeing some of you, because I, I know some of you again. <laughs> And I wish you the best, guys. Okay, thank you for joining the class. And you. tomorrow you will continue with Teacher Ivan. Thanks to you, Teacher. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're very welcome, guys. Bye, good night. Bye, bye. Bye, good night. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.